Hello and welcome to this little video about look we have coming to Dover and we've looked at this before and we've got lots of things going on in this one lots of very kind of topical and interesting things to talk about so let's dive straight into it so we have title first of all oops I meant to press the wrong thing there we go that's going to be the highlighter there sorry about that so we go on the title straight away and we talked about there's Punglish, so the idea of this mix between Punjabi and English. So it's using grammar taken from Punjabi, and so it's reflecting the language of the immigrants we're talking about here in the in the poem. The kind of hypothetical, and I think there's a mixture of people in here as well. I think it's the way the poem is presented is it's not necessarily following certain individuals it's generally describing immigrants of different backgrounds and different natures and different reasons for coming to England as well I think it's covering all of those so so that's the first thing and then second thing is about Dover Dover being a symbol of England and it's the closest parts of the continent and that's why there's channel crossings over there to this day um, by people coming on the on the little boats and because it's so close you can see France from Dover that's how close it is the first part of the poem there is an epigraph which is Matthew Arnold famous Victorian poet and he was writing in that poem about England's transition to becoming more secular as in like non-religious and if you think about the 19th century particularly things like ideas about um, like Darwin Darwin's ideas and Spencer's ideas and these things had a, an impact on shaking up how people viewed reality really how they viewed religion so that's what that poem is about and I think the reason that he's put that there is because if that poem reflects concern about change then He's reflecting, um, Nagra is reflecting English concerns about England changing again. And here it is. And I think a lot of this poem is referring to some of these media descriptions of immigrants and asylum seekers and everything, so everything like that. So it adopts some of the language of the tabloids as well. So I think that's another reason that he's referenced this poem, because it links to the idea of England changing and I think that's what he's thinking of there and maybe the changing of the people arriving into England as well it can work the other way too and that is actually reflected in the poem as well so we have um, stowed in the sea to invade so stowed is interesting because that's a verb that's associated with the sea you know like stowaways isn't it and it's got connotations of hiding and that you're not meant to be there then the way that it's written, it's kind of a bit of a mixture here because sometimes because you look at it, it feels like they're on a boat coming in because you've got the sea to invade. Now that is, um, so in the sea to invade, invade there as a verb. Again, it's Nagra is, I think he's deliberately emulating and actually satirising in many ways as well the language of UK tabloid newspapers. If you think about the Daily Express, Daily Mail, Sun mirror and all the like it's those kind of that's the kind of newspaper language that they use then we have al fresco again al fresco lash of a diesel breeze that actually creates a sense of cohesion with the last part of the poem down here where they're actually um the figures that he's talking about the people he's talking about are sitting eating outside well or sitting outside and that's what al fresco means is eating outside sitting outside isn't it and notably it's an italian word so again i think he's referring to the idea of everyone in this country has come from somewhere at some point where you know it was an empty landscape people arrived it's never it's never because it's an island humans have never evolved on british shores it's so Obviously, everyone at some point has arrived in the country from somewhere else. Everyone's ancestors have come at different at different times, admittedly, but it's everyone. Everyone has. So, I mean, some of those were invasions, actually, thinking of it as well. Some of those were real, like uh, William the Conqueror. 
that it was that real invasion, isn't it? So anyway, but anyway, that's what I think he's kind of referring to. I'm sorry, I've got a bit of a sidetrack there. It's an interesting poem. There's lots to say. Hyphenated compound, diesel breeze. This is a clever way of mixing up that sense of, well, in this first stanza, actually, there's a sense of motion and there's also a sense of uh, sensory appeal as well because the idea of you've got a feeling of the, the wind, the kinesthetic imagery there, and diesel, olfactory imagery. So that hyphenated compound expresses two emotion, not emotion, sorry, two senses there. And you could even say it's synesthesia where you're mixing up two senses. Almost said emotions again. <laughs> senses. Ratcheting is an interesting verb. It's in present continuous tense there. But the idea of, you could imagine like increasing speed, ratcheting speed, you know, like as if you're going through gears. Brunt with gobfuls of surf, flemmed by cushy come and go tourists. So this is all uh, very evocative language. The idea of that sense of movement on the sea. Then the idea is very sensory because gobfuls of surf, like the sea going into your mouth, like it gets onto your face, isn't it? And the smell of the petrol as well. Gobfuls of surf. Gobfuls is a colloquialism. And flemmed is an unusual verb as well. But the idea of... That's people spitting, isn't it? And actually, I think this is possibly a reference to the UK. There is a lot of, I hate it, don't you? I really hate it. I hate it when you see it when you're out and there's people spitting up on the pavement and stuff. It's, it's disgusting, isn't it? I blame footballers, to be honest. I think they've set a bad example over the... To be fair, they kind of have to. But the camera doesn't need to zoom in, does it? Anyway... I'm going I'm going off on one again. Cushy come and go tourist. So cushy is another colloquialism there as well. Cushy come and go tourist. So that's thinking about channel crossings. You know, how easy it is for a UK citizen to cross. The <laughs> well, maybe it was easy before Brexit. It's slightly more difficult than it used to be, of course. But the idea of it being really, this poem was written before Brexit. But we don't have to do context on this. But cushy come and go tourist, proud on the cruises. So proud for me there, that. I don't know about you, it makes me think of Titanic. It makes you think of people doing the uh, the classic um, Jack and Rose on the on the front of the boat, you know, the prow. Gives me that idea. And lording the ministered waves is that, really, that's got connotations of the Rule Britannia song, isn't it? Lord Britannia, Britannia lords the waves. So there's the idea of lording the ministered waves and ministered has got, connotations of power attached to it as well then we have seagull and shoal life so there is a sense of getting closer to the shore here as well seagull and shoal life vexing their blarneys uh, vexing is actually people think it's a colloquialism but it is actually standard english it's just a weird word where it was used a lot in say like jane austen's time and um, disappeared and came back and no one really knows why. So vexing is a strange, strange word. I like it. But this is all kind of colloquialisms as well and dialect as well. Vexing their blarneys upon our huddled camouflage. So there's a sense of, there's a mixture here of like, there's a sense of being an outsider, but then also being kind of integrated as well. That's what I think it does with the, or wanting to be integrated at least with the colloquialisms our huddled camouflage past the vast crumble of scummed cliffs so again that could you could argue that because it's scummed cliff i mean you do get scum as in sea scum around the coast when you get close to the sea and you get close to the the, the shore and the cliffs you see that uh it could suggest that the reality doesn't match up to the prospects really maybe it doesn't live up to the hype we can't write that in an essay like that but you see what i mean then scrumming on mulch so this is all colloquialisms here as well the idea of the seagulls as thunder unbladders that's personification as well and that is the neologism there unbladders so that's got connotations of taking a wee actually again it could be nagra as well is making a a highlighting aspects unpleasant aspects of british culture where you get you know any kind of walking around on a sunday morning after or saturday morning actually after you know friday or saturday night around any british town center and you're going to find those corners that stink of we aren't you so 
I think it could be a, again, a, a subtle reference to these unpleasant, unhygienic aspects of British culture, like the phlegmed and the unbladders. I might be going too far with that. If you disagree, just ignore it or think of something else. I don't mind. I'm not offended. It's fine. Then yobbish rain, yobbish as a pre-modifier, yobbish is a colloquialism, and that's also language that's kind of associated with tabloids when they're describing teenagers, isn't it? Yobs, yobs rip up flower beds. And it's normally implied to be young people, but really it could be any age of could be committing those kind of um, vandalism crimes. But it's always implied to be younger people, whether they know or not. Interesting, isn't it? Then a Bedford van is a particular type of van that you associate with the past, actually. You don't get Bedford vans anymore. Hutched is interesting, though. I'm sorry, I accidentally highlighted that too early. But Hutched it has got connotations of, again, scared animals to me. That's as a verb, using that as a verb. I don't know if it's a standard verb. I don't think it is. So probably another neologism there. Then I think into this stanza, it's more talking about immigrants in general. And in this case as well, I think there's a sense of and of illegal immigrants. It's got the sense of here because why would it be? Seasons or years we reap in land, unclocked by the national eye. So the national eye, that's an example of synecdoche because you've got an idea of the authorities looking out for people, unclock and unclock to clock something is a colloquialism as well. But seasons of years we reap. Reap's got connotations of harvest and work as well. Stabs in the back could be someone betrays somebody. Uh, I, I don't think it's... We don't have to worry too much about context, but you might remember a few years back there was that government campaign to... Uh, they had these vans driving around with placards on the side encouraging people to uh, phone in if they knew of any suspected asylum seekers they were kind of or illegal immigrants was it asylum? i can't remember it was illegal immigrants i think because these are illegal I'm saying, illegal immigrant vans and they had these kind of grim signs and a phone number on the side a bit kind of uh, a bit sinister really then we have uh teamed for breathing sweeps of grass through the whistling asper i i, I i'm not 100 percent sure i freely admit i find this I find this a bit strange, the language of it. I think, in many ways, the whistling asper of parks, it could be a reference to kind of suburban England again, and obviously the idea of going inland and getting jobs and hiding, and I think that could be... And the whist whistling asthma, that's a very unusual word combination, isn't it? It's unfamiliar collocation, actually, is when you have words that you don't normally get together but yeah whistling asper of parks yeah very very strange very strange image but it could be again connotations of breathlessness of running away of avoiding the authorities of hiding but of a sense of being just kind of out of sight in suburban england that seems to fit that's the best i got to be honest and i'm gonna go with that then it gets worse in some ways as well burdened ennobled polling sparks across pylon and pylon i my best impression of that is is that it's a really like a network like a it's a metaphor really to say like for pylon or there's a network of of what would be illegal immigrants effectively i think that's what it's that's getting at the idea swarms of us again swarms is that kind of tabloid language um grafting is well, as you know, if you're a Love Island fan, then you'll be familiar with that. But I don't think Nagra means it in the, quite the same sense as Love Island. But the Love Island sense of the meaning of it has evolved from the original colloquial meaning of it, which is like working. And it's a colloquialism as well. Black within the shot of the moon spotlight, banking on the miracle of sun. This, um, yeah, black within the shot of the... Th this reminds me of, I don't think he's necessarily directly referencing it, but there was a... There was a case of um, there were like illegal immigrant workers who all died like picking seafood at night without anyone realizing what was going on. Like event, well, eventually they found when they died, it was found, they found out what had been happening. But there was a large group there, and I, I don't necessarily think he's directly referencing it. But that's what it always makes me think of. There's the idea of people working kind of out of 
out of view, who are kind of like a hidden kind of subculture in England who aren't re who are here but not really here. That's why I think he's saying about the moon's the moon spotlight and the moon spotlight. You could argue again there's connotations of you know like in a a prison escape film, like the idea of the light being on someone like a spotlight. Span its rainbow, passport us to life. So when you get your passport, that's an unusual verb as well. It's being used. Verbing is the term, is when you're using nouns as verbs. Passport us to life. So it's the idea then of being freed. You're kind of freed up once you've got your passport. You're then you're you're legitimized in terms of your identity. That's what it's covering. Only then can it be human to hoik ourselves, bare face for the clear. So hoik is another colloquialism as well. But you know what I mean? It's like the idea you get legitimacy from your passport. Once your uh, asylum has been accepted or for other, other other reasons you've got citizenship, then you're then you're in the clear. So effectively, then I'm just going to move the screen up a bit so I can see it better down here. So then final stanza. Imagine my love and I are sundry others. Blared in the cash of our beeswax cars. So you've got again, I think it's it's maybe the back to it could be the same characters who were coming in in the first two stanzas. It may be others. It doesn't really matter. They can be more like just generic, generic um, immigrants covering all of these different backgrounds and, and problems and adversities that they're overcoming. So imagine my love and I and sun are sundry others. Blared, that's a neology. Oh, hang on, where's the? I've accidentally put rubber on. That's dopey. Right, here we go. So, Blared, that's a reference to Tony Blair. The now kind of, he's kind of, it's, it's interesting because he, he's quite notorious, really, because he, in the early days of Tony Blair, there was this real sense of kind of national renewal, really, and he'd kind of spearheaded New Labour where. They combined the kind of progressive elements that you kind of associate with left wing politics, but with very kind of business friendly um, economy friendly, you know, like big business um, economists and things like that. They were they were kind of a combining elements of the conservatives with Labour, so like new new Labour. So he was very popular and he got voted in, you know, was it twice, maybe even three times, was it twice, I think. The um, so he did you know he did well, but of course his copybook, his historic record, was of course very much murked, if that's the right word. I'm going to use the neologism there, murked because of the Iraq War stuff with all the yeah. I don't know if you know much about it, but the sexed up documents that was a phrase they used in the news at the time. Sexed up these. Um, documents were used to justify uh, an attacker. They turned out to all be fake. They were like made up by a student or something. Anyway, it's really interesting. There's stuff about it. You can look out for all this stuff. But anyway, sorry, I digress. Because in the sense of this is, it, he's thinking of the idea of that kind of cool Britannia Tony Blair, that kind of very early, that early Tony Blair period uh, where there was a lot of kind of positivity. It, uh, Britain was very kind of, outward focused with the world and 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 it was kind of cool again effectively so the idea of Blair promoting this kind of middle class but progressive and accepting lifestyle so that's why they're Blair in the cash and beeswax cars if you, you know if you know anything about polishing your cars you use your your beeswax to get that nice wax coat on it then this is all kind of middle class stuff. Crash clothes, that's colloquial as well, because he's thinking about clothes that you crash out in, you know, clothes that you're relaxing in. Free, so I haven't got too much to say about that, but the connotations of that. We raise our charge glasses over unpar over unparasoled tables. I think unparasoled suggests sunshine, I, I'm guessing. It's a bit of a weird one. I, I would have expected it to be parasoled tables rather than unparasoled. But that's another unusual word choice there. But raise our charged glasses. So that's like raising a toast. It's got the connotations of that. These are both actually, both of these are very unusual pre-modifiers, charged and unparasoled in the senses in that they're being used. Uh, we raise our charged glasses over on parasol tables east. 
babbling our lingos, flecked by the chalk of Britannia. So this is the idea that this final stanza is the dream of being fully integrated, fully accepted British citizens. And then that's the idea of it babbling our lingos, flecked by the chalk of Britannia. So I take that as meaning retaining some of your, uh, you know, retaining some of your original identity merged with goes flecked by the chalk of Britannia, like your new identity as a new arrival in, so new, probably more, probably not so new at this stage, but probably more kind of established and settled UK citizen. So that's why the chalk of Britannia and the chalk of Britannia links back to the whole Dover thing because. The white cliffs of Dover, they're white because they're cliffs. And there probably is symbolism in this poem as well, along the lines of whiteness being associated with chalk and Dover and the language of those tabloids like invade and idea of what other one do we have? It was invade, didn't we? And then we had, oh, I've lost it. I can't see the other one. I might have to pause. Swarms, that's it. Thank you for the pause button. Anyway, so that's it for that. So obviously, if you have more ideas, you can put comments on and think about those. But that's it. Thank you. I hope you found that useful. It's a tricky one, but it's a good one. It's a good one. Bye-bye.